So of course, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is all about breathing. It's all about laying down, breathing, relaxing, and bringing that oxygen into our bodies. We all know that increasing our oxygen levels will improve cellular function. But do we need a hyperbaric chamber for that? What if we had improved breathwork techniques that we did at the surface to allow us to bring more oxygen? Wouldn't that still help? And let's take that one step further. Can we do breathwork sessions inside the chamber, combining both? Everybody's looking for an angle to save time. So I could do my hyperbaric sessions, I could do my breathwork, can I do my breath work in my hyperbaric session? That is the topic for today's video. So let's start with this. Most people do not breathe efficiently and fully. Most of us have poor posture. Most of us sniff, right? Shallow breaths, chest breaths. And we spend most of our day in our sympathetic nervous system, stressed out and sniffing the air that we're breathing. So let's just start by saying any attempt at improving our breathing, at improving diaphragmatic breathing instead of chest breathing, at improving our CO2 tolerance, at learning new and different ways of doing breath work to breathe faster, breathe slower, bring more oxygen into our body, and to build that CO2 tolerance, all of that's going to improve our health. Hyperbaric specifically is a mechanism to deliver an amount, a quantity of oxygen that just cannot be created at the surface. It's using pressure to drive oxygen to not only saturate our red blood cells, but to supersaturate our plasma. It's in a bit of a different category because of the amount of oxygen that we could actually drive into a person's body using a tool like that. But at the same time, simple breaks in a day just to do your breath work, your breath work sessions, and develop your breath work practice will absolutely shift your autonomic nervous system back into parasympathetics will drive more oxygen into your cells, will help you build that tolerance to CO2, will help to balance neurotransmitters and release some nitric oxide in your system. So all of this is going to be great and improve your health. So yes, breath work should absolutely be a part of everybody's daily practice. Learning new and different types of breath work, just like you would with exercise, to develop a repertoire of different types that you're able to do because each one has its own specific benefits. Two versions of breath work that I like to do would be box breathing and breath holding. Box breathing because it's a relatively easy strategy and it allows me to get back into my parasympathetic nervous system. Box breathing is what it sounds like, a box. So you pick a period of time that you inhale, hold, exhale, and then hold. So let's say four seconds in, hold for four seconds, four seconds out, hold for four seconds and repeat. You could do three seconds. You could do five, eight, 15 seconds. But for me and many other people, box breathing could be a tremendous technique for really reducing sympathetic nervous system activity and improving parasympathetic tone. CO2 tolerance or breath holding is another great way to learn to A, adapt to CO2. And there's a lot of great benefits to that. And B, also help improve that autonomic nervous system balance. Breath holding is exactly what it sounds like, holding your breath and doing it for a period of time. There's different strategies for that. Some hold your breath on the way in. Some would have you repeat rapid inhalation and exhalations and then hold on an exhale, much like Wim Hof breathing. Wim Hof is a great technique that I've also used many times over the years. Specifically, I do a lot of scuba diving and free diving. So for me to learn how to hold my breath and to hold my breath on the inhalation really helps me train for those free diving experiences. I'm not necessarily particular for which ones you choose, but absolutely believe that it should be part of a decision that you make as a practice in your daily life. We are on a mission to make sure that the people looking for this information have access to it. I know that there's a lot of content out there and I know that it could be very confusing when people are trying to find the answers that they're looking for. And it's really important for me that those people can find these answers. So when you like it, when you subscribe and when you share these videos, that helps the people looking for this content know that they're getting a trustworthy source and they're getting the information that they're trying to find. So please do that and help us help other people. Lastly is this question, can I combine my breathwork sessions or my breathwork training in the hyperbaric chamber? And the answer is sometimes yes, but please be careful. Here's the story. While the chamber is pressurizing, you should be relaxed and just breathing normally. Why? 
because you need to be equalizing your ears and you want to be paying attention to the pressure building up in your ears to make sure that you're equalizing and keeping up the pace of the pressure as it's building up, making sure that you're staying equalized throughout that entire journey. Also, breathing is what equalizes your lungs. So every breath you take in and out is allowing you to equalize at the depth that you are at the time of that breath. So lungs are equalizing as you're breathing, and then you're paying attention and clearing your ears as needed during that pressurization process. During the depressurization process, the same thing is happening. Your ears need a way of equalizing as you're ascending back up, which for the most part is gonna take care of itself actually, but you might wanna be moving your jaw, yawning a little bit, and allowing that gas to release from your ears. Also, your lungs are equalizing back to the surface as you're depressurizing the chamber, and you certainly wanna make sure that the lungs are equalizing throughout that ascent. The most dangerous thing somebody can do in a hyperbaric chamber is to hold their breath as the chamber is depressurizing. It's called pulmonary overinflation. So just to give you some numbers, if you took a biggest breath you could right now, let's say we're holding 50 units of air in our lungs. And now I take you to two atmospheres inside the chamber. And I ask you to take that same breath. You're going to get 50 units of air in your lungs at that breath. But now as I bring you back to the surface, that air is going to expand twice the size. So if your lungs are at full capacity and now you're coming up to the surface and they keep expanding, that's a pulmonary overinflation injury, pulmonary barotrauma. There's five different types. We're not going to go into the details. All I'm going to tell you is breath holding on the ascent phase of a dive, whether it's in the water or in a chamber, is literally one of the most dangerous things somebody can do. So it's critical that during the pressurization and the depressurization of that chamber that you or patients, whoever's in the chamber is relaxed and just breathing normally. While the chamber is at the depth that you're gonna stay at, that's a safer place to do breathwork sessions, whether that's box breathing or holotropic breathwork or breath holding. Choosing to do a breathwork session or breathwork training at the depth would generally be considered a safe time to do something like that. Now, the most dangerous thing that could happen would be a rapid decompression during a breath hold. The same thing, not holding your breath while the chamber's depressurizing. And in an emergency situation, something like that could happen. Assuming that you're safe, that your chamber is working well, that there aren't any emergencies, and you could be relaxed inside your chamber, doing breathwork sessions in a chamber at depth can be considered a safe thing to do and would also continue to drive increasing levels of oxygen into our body. Breathwork techniques are fabulous, and yes, you should be doing them daily. And yes, as long as the chamber is at a pressure and that pressure is remaining static, not during the pressurization, not during the depressurization, and being aware of emergencies so that you can return to normal breathing if there was an emergency, while the chamber is held at a certain depth, doing some breathwork activity could be a great place to really improve the oxygenation of your cells while in the chamber and combining your breathwork session with your hyperbaric session. Hope that answers that question. We do get it pretty often, and I'll see you on the next video.